Okay, here is my Tote Vision HY5500 uh, black and white portable TV. You can see it was made in April of 1988. Tote Vision is actually the uh, model, or actually the, the brand name as far as I know. It's got this little kickstand. Uh, channel adjustment here and you can switch between uh, low V you switch between the, the low VHF channels here with these uh, buttons up here or you can choose the higher VHF channels or if I think it's if you uh, well I don't know and I you, you mess with these two things here and you eventually you can get the, uh, depending on what combination those buttons are in, you get the um, the UHF channels, which back in the day were all the good channels that had the reruns and they uh, don't exist anymore. It's on off switch, volume control, nice little carrying handle and the uh, broken antenna is the only thing that happened. Now this unit takes uh, about nine d size batteries and if i remember correctly that would last about six hours probably four to six hours of tv watching uh, of course it does have this uh, wonderful power supply this is the original power supply uh, it was dropped at some point uh, likely repeatedly and I put it back together with uh, CA glue and JB Weld, and uh, it does work again. It has this uh, nice little ventilation hole on the top because I couldn't find that piece. But long, long as it should be good for what I'm using. Uh, don't try that at home. So, what else did I want? Yeah, this particular unit, uh, I am the, the only owner it's ever known. I've had it since, uh, well, since I bought it, probably in 1988, and uh, it's got very low hours. It never got much use. It's got a few hours on it, and I went to go check it out and see if it worked, and it turns out the bottom half of the screen is blank. So I'll show you what the problem is here. All right, let's try turning it on. Oh, we got sound. Yep, that's it. That's exactly where it was the last time I tried it. This. All right. You can see there, I've got the brightness turned down uh, as much as possible. I heard it's a, it's a bad idea when you have like a bright line here. Like when you have total vertical collapse, you should turn uh, the brightness down to as low as you possibly can. I feel like I can get it even lower there to avoid uh, burn in. And um, that's what happens when you adjust the vertical hold. It just creates that line. It doesn't really fix anything. I tell you, the way this thing's labeled... Um, you know, all the resistors and, and whatnot and diodes and capacitors are, are labeled on the back of this uh, board here. And, you know, it's easy to disconnect the top of the case. It's like they meant it to be worked on. So it's clearly, you know, from a different era. Nice little carry handle here. This is the only thing that really ever happened to this TV that I'm aware of, at least is that there was a little cylinder here on top and at some point early in its lifespan that broke off and I ah man it just bugs me I got the case separated from it the uh, top and lower part I did have to uh, take out I had to unsolder a couple of wires here of course I <clears throat> photographed them before I pulled the two wires one's black one's red uh, for positive and negative and those go to the uh, batteries the nine uh, D-sized batteries this thing takes for battery power, and uh, the, I was able to uh, get more room to, to look at this uh, circuit board and see what's going on. 
uh, I'm afraid to do anything like take the CRT out of here. It's a, <clears throat> it's a cute little CRT. It's five, uh, five inches, I think is what it's marketed as. But um, one thing here, the uh, adjustment for, you know, channels, channel selecting, I'd probably have to, I uh, might undo something in there. The knob is, uh, the mechanism works with thread or uh, something similar. And if that gets, if anything in here gets uh, undone, if this little thread comes off, uh, in the process of taking this thing out to completely separate it. Uh, right now I want to avoid that because that would probably mess up everything getting it back. I have no idea how I go about doing that. All right, doing a little bit of uh, tracing wires here with the multimeter. Looks like this green one here, that's your uh, horizontal deflection and the yellow one vertical. Uh, probably most people already know that. But I was able to trace those all the way over to here, horizontal and vertical. It's actually this one right here and that one right there. Okay, I found a suspicious looking diode. It uh, appears to be located, it's mounted vertically it's right about here. It's very hard to see. It's right next to that transformer. It looks corroded. The lead is corroded and there's a little bit of corrosion on what is the top. The diode's mounted vertically and the black band appears to be up. So I don't see how it's connected to the vertical deflection circuit. I'm suspicious this is the cause of the problem but it looks like something that might be an issue nonetheless. So I'll put this in diode test mode in the uh, meter here. I'll go, I just have a diode here off by itself. No connection to this, this TV and it gives 0.628 volts. Uh, forward voltage drop. If I swap it around, it should register open, and it does. It doesn't give me anything. If I come here, this is the diode in question that looks corroded. Gives me 0 0.63 voltage, uh, volt drop forward, which, I don't know, it looks good. Uh, of course, if I flip it around backwards, It doesn't give me open, it gives me 1.227 volt drop reverse polarity, but, um, you know, it's, it's in circuit and it's probably going through other things. So the, you know, with the equipment I have, the only way to properly test it would be to yank it out and test it. But uh, right now it just looks to me like that's not actually the issue. Plus it's over here and the voltage, uh, the signal to the vertical deflection, which I think is the problem, is right here. It's up here by the flyback transformer. Right here from the pin 8 to here and then to the yoke is what is concerning me, so I'm not sure messing around with that is going to do anything. Um, again, I'm not really too convinced that this diode has anything to do with the issue, since the vertical the wire that goes to the yoke for vertical deflection is right here, which I I don't see that it's connected to that um, diode up here, which is near the flyback transformer. Really, it just looks like the signal comes from pin 8 and then goes out to the uh, vertical deflection yoke. I'd like to just start desoldering. Uh, that make me feel at least productive, but I uh, probably should do a little bit more research. Uh, see what I'm getting into before I start actually desoldering things. And replacing stuff that doesn't need to be replaced and breaking things that aren't broken and, and so on and so forth. The adventure continues. Alright, well here's something. 
to uh, ch here's something to check out. Here you have the vertical hold, the thing that makes the keeps the adjust the TV to keep the picture from rolling. Down here there's a height adjustment. And right here, I think, off of the vertical hold, there is a trace. You can follow all the way here, here, and it leads up to this IC right here. So maybe this is the IC for vertical, and the one down at the other end is for... Uh, uh, the one down at the other end is maybe for horizontal. Uh, these the two ICs, I think, are the same. I'm not really sure what they do. I got to get a number off of them and uh, look it up. They may or may not be the problem. That should be going to the vertical deflection coil. And my understanding is that should be oscillating about zero, not three. It should be like a sine wave um, coming out of the AC voltage in, in any outlet. Uh, the average should be zero, but to me this says the average is about three volts. And I'll go right to the IC pin itself, pin eight, and still three volts. And that might explain, or maybe that explains, why the picture looks like it's deflected so far up and half the screen is black. It was suggested to me by somebody who probably knows what they're doing, unlike me, to uh, check all of the capacitors and that the problem uh, was capacitor related. I have looked in here and I have yet to see one, uh, certainly around the vertical deflection uh, circuit or what I think is the parts of it that appear to be leaking. Uh, right now, I'm still seeing that signal comes from eight and then pretty much just goes right out to the deflection yoke. And my understanding is the signal for the deflection should be like a square uh, sawtooth wave that oscillates around zero. And instead what we have is a sawtooth wave that oscillates around about three volts. So to me, uh, that kind of points at the IC, unless this IC is perhaps getting an input that um, is causing it to misbehave, or it, you know, it could still be uh, just because I don't see any leaking doesn't mean the capacitors aren't leaking, doesn't mean that there isn't an issue, and I can't really test them in circuit. So I have to decide like which ones are worth uh, desoldering and so on if it gets to that point. Okay, well, made some progress. Right now I have a screen full of snow. Don't have anything set up to feed this. I, I don't have the sound hooked up, the cases still apart, etc., etc. I went in and pulled out this one 1,000 uh, microfarad, microfarad uh, capacitor, tested it, no capacitance, and it's a dead short. So I have this other one in here just as a trial. It's about 2200 microfarads. I don't intend on leaving it in, obviously, like this. But uh, I hooked it up in place of the capacitor, which normally would go on the other side of the board. And um, lo and behold, I have a full screen again. I did try it without the capacitor. I just had a line, so there was no a line right down the center. So there was obviously no... Uh, vertical scan going on at all but this looks promising in that uh the black flickering lines there are just because i'm filming a crt etc uh, etc et i did pull one other capacitor out tested it it seemed fine it was a uh 
470 microfarad capacitor. I, I checked it and it was about 500 microfarads and certainly wasn't a dead short. 